Hey, thanks for coming back to the channel for another first look. Today we've got the Radio Design Labs PT-AMG2 on the bench. A big thanks to our friends at Radio Design Labs for sending over the PT-AMG2 for us to check out. I've had this one for a little while now and something like a tester, you really want to give it a chance to sit on the workbench and get used and they've been really awesome in allowing me the time to do that. Most of us have used or carried a Whirlwind cue box at some point in our careers probably, and while there are a lot of nice features on the cue box, I think there's always uh, room to do things a little differently. One of the more common tasks the cue box is handy for is to simply send out tone to test a signal path or to plug in a signal to monitor what's being sent down a given line. Basic but essential functions in the pro audio world. Now, one of the more common complaints I've heard about the cue box is how easy it can be to drop and break them. And I usually hear these stories from folks when they've had to buy a replacement and shell out another $200 after dropping theirs. So the PT-AMG2 isn't going to save you any money up front. These come in right around $300 at the time of filming, and it doesn't really solve any of the size or weight or battery requirement complaints that I've also heard about the Q-Box over the years. These things are built like an absolute tank, if you plan on dropping one, I would seriously recommend uh, wearing foot protection. It comes in at one pound, eight ounces loaded with that pair of nine volt batteries. Now power for this unit is listed as 12 to 24 volts DC and you can power it either internally off that pair of nine volt batteries or externally from a wall plug, uh, the same one that all of Radio Design Lab's units uh, pretty much seem to use. One thing to note is during testing, this unit did power up just fine with a single nine volt battery and I did didn't even get the low battery indicator so not sure how long that would go for or what your results would be but it does seem to operate down to 9 volts just fine. One specific addition from the Q-Box that I personally find very helpful is this really nice LED VU meter. Now you do lose the ability on this unit to monitor with headphones. There's no headphone jack. There's XLR and RCA uh, balanced and unbalanced uh, in and out but no headphone jack and that is something I've used a fair amount but let's go ahead and connect up are test leads. Now it comes with this set of XLR to alligator clip test leads that depending on what you're up to may be very handy or maybe something you don't use at all. And you can see when I plug in that it ranges right up and finds zero dB across uh, the line there. And there's the tone. Now this tool is specifically designed to assist with installed uh, audio work. And if you've worked with Radio Design Labs uh, gear before, you know they make the little modules. And a lot of times in situations, you'll see multiples of those modules running uh, in a signal chain. So you might have inputs from a mic pre and then other modules around them for compression or other uh, tools. There's so many of those little stick on module tools and a unit like this where you can see input and output levels to a degree of accuracy is very, very helpful indeed in setting those up and making sure you have good gain structure between those different stages of your signal path. So that's what this unit was designed for. And there is another unit that goes in tandem with this. If you need to send the signal, the tone generator out from a distance, there's the PTASG1 signal generator module uh, available. And it is essentially just one half, just the output half of this tool. Now both feature a switched mic or line level balanced output that can be internally referenced to plus four or plus six dBU along with an unbalanced output and a unique output network to deliver the same output level into both low and high impedance inputs down the line. Uh, the test tone itself is unique as well at 700 hertz which makes it easy to tell apart from more common 401k tones that you'll hear so often in the field in production environments. Stability the ability of the tone signal is closely monitored by comparing the output right off the oscillator against a temperature stable reference internally and compensating for the gain at the final output. 
This video was made possible in part by my good friend Baz the Roadie. He's out on tour right now, and you can follow along at Baz, B A Z, the roadie.com. But when he's not on tour in the off season, he does awesome seminars about touring life, uh, pro audio on the road, and you want to be sure to catch those if you're in the Pacific Northwest. So hit Baz, the roadie.com for more info and dates. He's going to be announcing his fall schedule very soon. Reach out to him and let him know if you're interested in that kind of a seminar about touring. Touring Pro Audio, BazTheRoadie.com. Thanks for all the support, Baz. Now, I think this box could be a really interesting platform to make some additions to if you were so inclined. It's incredibly easy to take apart, really well built, and there's enough space inside that you could add back in some of those features like the headphone jack if you needed it. I, I think I would have a hard time passing up the opportunity to modify this if I owned it myself. I would have to add back in uh, headphone uh, output. There's definitely uh, space and room within this design to do that you could easily uh, piggyback off the speaker here and do like a cue box thing where you plug in the headphone, it cuts off the speaker or just add in a single switch and use the same amplifier, just add a headphone jack. That'd be very simple. I'd also love to put an off switch on the oscillator just because in certain situations, depending on how you have the setup with micro line level output, even with the speaker level all the way down, you do hear a little bit, just the tiniest bit. You gotta put your ear right up to it of that tone generator bleeding and it'd just be nice to be able to switch that off completely. Other than that, you get this nice stand that comes with the unit and that's got some holes and really makes just a great angle for leaving this on the bench. There's a real nice weight to this unit. It feels like a proper tool and something that drives me crazy about benchtop tools. Uh, a lot of times anyway, in our industries, we're using XLR cables with heavy connectors, heavy cable, and you put something on the bench that while it, you know, lightweight is good for carrying it around, when you connect it up, a lot of times your cable is dragging your uh, tool across the bench. So having that stand and the option to put some screws through that to mount that uh, is really helpful. The other thing that I don't know how much I would use, but definitely would come in handy for somebody is the little hook on the back there. And that actually, it looks like it's at a strange angle but it makes a really nice hook for hooking over things like the edge of a shelf, uh, utility shelving, things like that, that you would typically have in a workshop. So it's an oddly specific shape to that hook and you look at it and go, well, what the heck uh, am I supposed to do with that? But it really does. It fits over wire rack shelving and things like storage shelving really nicely. And it's got a little hole so you can throw a zip tie or a cable tie or something or a piece of uh, line or wire through that if you needed to hang it from something. So they've thought of a lot of uses here. You know, you might want to put like a piece of wire in a carabiner and hang this uh, off of stuff when you're working in the field. A lot of times configuring those AV racks, you're in a closet, you're in some unusual space and uh, any way to get your tools up off the ground and where you can use them uh, without having to use your hands and hold them can be a benefit. So they've definitely thought of that even if it doesn't immediately look like a uh, super standard style of hook. Now the RCA in and outputs are something that, again, I probably wouldn't use that much, but for what this tool was designed for, for the installation world and the other modules they make, definitely understand why they're included. I'd love to see this unit with these and this speaker level knob recessed a bit more. These buttons here you can push in a good bit and you don't feel like they're gonna get sheared off putting it in and out of a bag, but that adds a fair amount of depth to a otherwise kind of large unit and it would be a little easier to slide in and out of a pouch or in and out of a Pelican case or work box if that didn't protrude quite so much. So that's it for the PT-AMG2, the Radio Design Lab's precision analog audio generator level monitor. This thing's awesome, I really like it. I don't think it's necessarily a cue box replacement for most people. For 99% of the people that are carrying cue boxes, it's probably the right tool. It's a little lighter, it's got a belt clip, it's a little smaller, and it's probably the tool that's going to get the job done. I still think that could be done better for that purpose, but this is not a replacement for a cue box. This is a bench top tool. This is something something to put in your workbox. Uh, again, for installation work, I could probably carry one interchangeably with a cue box and get by just fine. So if you're just looking for a more rugged alternative 
and it fits the feature set that you need. It's a really nice unit. Again, built with precision in mind, uh, whereas the Q box is kind of a rough and ready uh, type of deal. So you're getting a little bit more precision in what you can read and the stability of the tone generator output. And that is nice if you need it. Uh, obviously it's a little small speaker. You're not gonna be doing anything high fidelity with a speaker of this uh, size, but definitely plenty for patching into a press mult and hearing the quality, hearing if you have any buzzes, anything like that. So again, for most of my work, this would do just fine. It's a really, really nice tool, really incredibly well built, just like everything Radio Design Labs uh, puts together, meant to be used in harsh professional situations. So if you like that kind of thing, made in the USA, really nice uh, folks over there at Radio Design Labs. Thanks again for sending this over, letting me have so much time with it and being open to letting me show it off here on the channel. That's it for this time and the PTAMG2. Thanks a whole bunch to Radio Design Labs for letting me hang on to this one for so long and keep it on the workbench and really use it. With tools especially, I think it's really hard to do even a first look video unless you've actually had your hands on the unit and got to use it uh, a good bit. So thanks so much to them for understanding that. Thanks also to everybody on Patreon, one-time PayPal supporters, folks who just follow the affiliate links in the description, and everybody who goes to dcsoundup.com and follows links or follows along there or on social media. It's a huge help. Uh, it's been amazing to grow the channel. I've got a ton of stuff planned to share with you for the rest of this year, and it's all because you've been here to help get uh, us to where we are right now. So thanks again, and I'll see you next time.